So let's begin our discussion about diuretics with osmotic diuretics. So as the name uh, says, we're going to use osmotic forces. So we're going to use solute uh, forces to drive diuresis. So to begin, uh, we're going to start out with the prototypical drug. Prototypical drug isn't going to include all of them. However, this is the main one associated with it. So we're going to have mannitol. Mannitol is going to be the prototype drug for an osmotic diuresis. So how does it work? So let's talk about its mechanism of action. Well, the mechanism of action is going to be we're going to it's going to be filtered by the glomerulus. So we have our glomerular filtration rate. Uh, mannitol. Mannitol. There's two ends will be filtered. So we've got our glomerulus, here's our proximal, here's our descending loop of Henle, ascending, DCT, and collecting duct. So this is the proximal collecting tubule, distal collecting tubule, this is our glomerulus. Mannitol will be filtered, it can pass through the glomerulus. However, it's not going to be reabsorbed, it doesn't get reabsorbed from the lumen. So we're going to have a lumen, so inside here's the, our lumen, here's our mannitol, M for mannitol. Typically you're going to have sodium, and that sodium is going to leave. It'll get reabsorbed and water will follow. And that is how we the kidneys work. It's going to take solute concentrations, we're going to move our sodium from inside, now we're going to have a whole bunch of sodium outside. And let me delete this. So we just moved our sodium from inside the lumen to outside the lumen. Our water is going to follow. We're going to use that osmotic gradient. We're going to draw that water in. However, we just gave mannitol. All that mannitol gets passed through the, through the glomerulus into the lumen. So now we're in the lumen, and it's going to create another solute gradient. Water isn't going to want to follow as much. So sodium potassium, chloride, all this will be more likely to stay in the uh, in the lumen and you can get in hyponatremia uh, as a result. However, water isn't going to want to leave as much because we have this gradient, a solute gradient. We're introducing more solutes into the lumen. More solutes, water will want to stay because it'll want to stay with the solutes. I will have less sodium Reabsorption will have less chloride, will have less potassium reabsorption. This is a uh, mannitol is excellent for the water soluble segments. It's because water then will want to stay inside. It'll make you pee more. That's the point. Osmotic diuretic. It's going to use osmotic forces, so solute forces, to draw water into the lumen, causing you to pee. It'll decrease your uh, or it'll increase your urine outflow. So the number one location is going to be your proximal convoluted tubule. That's going to be where most of the reabsorption takes place. Uh, this is going to be the main site of action. Also, remember I said all the water-soluble segments uh, of, the, of the nephron are going to be where mannitol acts. So we have the proximal convoluted tubule. You also have the thick ascending segment. You also have the distal collecting tubule. You also have the thin descending segment. Um, all of these locations are where mannitol can act. The number one is going to be the proximal convoluted tubule. So what are some uses? So what are some uses for mannitol? So an osmotic diuretic. Well, we're going to increase renal blood flow. Well, why do we do that? Well, let's go back to our figure. Uh, we're increasing renal blood flow because we're putting water into the lumen, we're reabsorbing less, we're going to increase our output of urine. And that's because we have an increased solute gradient, we're going to keep fluids going through the lumen of our nephron, and thus we'll pee more. We're going to increase our flow. So increased renal blood flow, why do we get increased renal blood flow? That seems a little odd. Well, no, it really doesn't. It's because when we diurese, we're getting rid of fluids. That's the point. However, our intravascular, our blood, doesn't like it. 
our blood detects that we're getting rid of some of the water. Typically, we would be reabsorbing it, reabsorbing some of that water, putting it back into the bloodstream. However, we just got rid of that water. So now our blood has decreased water. Well, that decreased water uh, is compensated because cells, oops, that's not how you spell cells. Cells will shed some excess water. Their, the cell's intracellular water supply will decrease. The cells will put off some water to increase the blood water levels, the interstitial levels as well. So we're going to swell the extracellular environment. So if we increase extracellular environment water, remember the cells are getting rid of some of their intracellular water to, to make up for the extracellular environment, and that extracellular water will eventually make its way to the bloodstream, increase the blood uh, water content, and this is how we get increased renal blood flow. Not red blood cell, renal blood flow. And why do we get that? It's because we have increased blood flow to the kidneys because we increase our blood water volume since our intracellular volume is shrinking. So that intracellular volume shrinking uh, is also used for cerebral edema. If we have cerebral edema, we want to get rid of some of the water that's inside your brain. And inside the brain cells, what we'll do is we'll decrease intracellular volume so the brain swelling will decrease. Same volume or same principle up here as increasing our renal blood flow. So we're going to expand that extracellular environment that will get taken up into the bloodstream. We're instead moving water from your brain in the brain cells and now we're going to redistribute to the blood flow, so the whole system instead. So that's going to be one of the main uses. I would start this. Mannitol is going to be used for emergency cerebral edema. If you don't relieve this, you can have brain damage uh, due to the intracerebral swelling. Your brain, your cranial bones don't like to have much give. So if you increase intracranial pressure, you can have neurologic problems develop. So that's the basics of mannitol. Now let's move on to a different diuretic.